It would be a guess. But I'd say right now, far more than 35. In North America, more than 35. 35? Well, I'm not an expert. Well, hold on, I'm not an expert. I'm not, I'm not an authority. authority. I'm someone who has been a murderer for almost 20 years. I'm just an extremely accomplished murderer. I was also involved in killing co-eds. Yeah, let's get this show started! Welcome to Cord Killers, our mission to report the intel from the front lines of the cord cutting revolution so that you, my friends, can watch the stuff you love when you want, where you want, on whatever device you want. I'm Tom Merritt. Hey, I'm and Brad I am Brushwood. not a murderer. Oh, you beat me to the punch. I'm not a murderer either. I'm not certainly not a serial murderer. But uh, one of those was an actor portraying a serial murderer. The other was the actual serial murderer that he was acting like. And uh, it's it's fairly chilling. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, the most I, chilling part for me was how much slimmer the actual murderer was. Uh, the most chilling part for me is how much better an actor the actor was. He was better at the character than the actual guy he was trying to be. Yeah, it's like that uh, that scene from Slacker. The blood just wasn't real in real life. Exactly. It was the wrong color. Uh, but that comes from, that is about Mind Hunters, which I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about later on, the fantastic new Netflix original, but not as fantastic or as new as our special guest. Or as not murdery as non-murderer Ayaz Akhtar from CNET.com, who's also joining that's, us. That's me. I'm a non-murderer. <laughs> I, I have once taken the life of a fly. Uh, but that's not technically murder because it's not a person. So you can't say Ayaz wouldn't hurt a fly. Or maybe you could say Ayaz wouldn't hurt a fly again. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Look, a lot that, of things change when you add again. Yeah. yeah, that fly, I mean, it wasn't paying rent, so it had to go. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we got lots to get to, so let's start with our primary target. CNBC has stoked the hopes of many Marvel fans today uh, by claiming that sources tell it 21st Century Fox has been holding on again, off again talks. Will they, won't they? Sam and Diane uh, between Disney uh, over a potential sale of everything but news and sports. So the idea that they keep talking about and circling back around to would be to sell the international assets. So Sky TV, for instance, uh, the movie production, Fox Studios, and TV production, as well as the cable networks like FX and National Geographic, to Disney. Fox News, Fox Sports, the local broadcast channels, those would all stay with 21st Century Fox if this deal were to happen. So, in other words, X-Men and Deadpool would come back to Marvel. Uh, Fox's leadership supposedly fears it will not be able to compete on its own as a movie studio with Netflix and Amazon. Now, again, these talks are not happening right now. According to CNBC, they are on again, off again. But the sources say they're just as likely to continue again at some point as they have. Fox and Disney, of course, not say anything about this. I, Brian, I found the most interesting part of this story to be when my mind immediately said, oh, I wonder if they'd let us go down from four big movie studios to three and then realizing, well, wait a minute, Amazon and Netflix are the motivating factors here. I guess we have five big movies, maybe six big movie studios right now. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly getting to be a, a crowded space. Uh, the biggest surprise to me is that nobody's reporting that what this could mean for finally getting a, a Fantastic Four good movie, right? Because that's Fox, right? They're Fox. That's yes, awesome. X Men, Deadpool, and Fantastic Four. I mean, you could have written that in for me, and I would have said it. Well, no, those but those are but, just but my own selections. I poked at round, and all the articles mentioned everyone but Fantastic Four, and I'm like, guys, you're burying the lead. <laughs> uh, and keep in mind also that uh, we had already seen kind of a. A, a, a budding relationship between the two. Two years ago, uh, uh, they, they had started talking about television deals. That's how we got Legion on the FX network uh, because Legion is, of course, a Marvel property. Um, uh, I tell you what, I would love, love, love to see the whole family get together, and uh, that would make me very happy. It does make sense that you would exclude stuff like all of the sports stuff because uh, Disney owns uh, ESPN, right? And they probably wouldn't, wouldn't be. Yeah, so they would. Of they, they they wouldn't want to combine Fox Sports and ESPN under one ownership. Uh, and and news wise, uh, Disney has ABC News, so you wouldn't want to combine those either. Uh, what do you say, Is Exciting news or just more bluff and bluster? Uh, I mean, we've seen deals with Marvel before, Disney anyway, when it came to Sony, right? That there was all this talk a while ago. They were they were trying to figure out some kind of plan, and then our hearts were broken because they were like, there's no deal. And then eventually things turned out okay with that kind of thing. If Marvel 
gets back some of these things through Disney buying 21st Century Fox, which sounds like just sounds insane, by the way. Just the idea of like, okay, massive company buying, well, not the heart and soul, but a lot of what Fox used to be. So I, I, I would be really thrilled. Yeah, I also thought Fantastic Four could have a good movie, but I mean, it's impossible, right? Nobody can actually fix that unless Marvel decided to do Dude, that. Dude, they totally can't. All, all you got to do is make it a period piece and and maybe add a time travel element to it where it's like it's Cold War era, you know, just um, oh, we got to beat the Reds to space. Whoa, crazy vortex. What? 21st century. And now I'm Bendy Man. That's, that's, and don't forget, just, Fox <laughs> owns the physical distribution rights to the first six Star Wars movies and yep. owns the digital rights to Star Wars A New Hope. Oh, that's right. So that would yeah, so th that would become really whole helps. again. Yeah, that would be a reunion. Now, granted, we, we, sh we can't emphasize enough, they aren't talking right now. So this isn't yeah. happening. Uh, it's just that they've talked about it several times in the past. So CNBC's like, hey, they, they might start talking about it again. And I think that, again, is the biggest part of this story. Even if they don't have Disney end up buying Fox, just the fact that a company as big as 21st Century Fox was seriously talking to Disney like, maybe we should just sell our movie studio to you because Netflix and Amazon are making it really hard to stay independent. Yeah, and with the, Disney's upcoming streaming service, this is another reason. If they, they already have, obviously, Marvel and Star Wars and everything else under the sun. They've got Pixar. They've got Mickey Mouse. They've got a ton of IP already. If they go out and get a bunch of Fox's stuff, too, when they have their streaming service, they're going to be a nightmare for something like Netflix because you're going to go, where am I supposed to go for this content? Netflix has its own original stuff, and it's really building its library because it has to because this is the new scape we'll be seeing of Here's Disney's streaming service, and if they do manage to put a deal together with Fox, maybe they don't even purchase them outright, but they could probably bring Fox over into their streaming service, which would really hurt things like Hulu and Netflix in general. Yeah, I'll bet that. I mean, that's I, I'm not going to say that's the real reason, quote unquote, for the play, but that has to be a major, major contributing factor, because if you tell me Disney has a Disney streaming service to complete compete with Netflix and Amazon, I'm like, OK, kids stuff, Disney, I guess. Yeah, maybe some Marvel. Uh, and then uh, but if you say also, because think about the back catalog 20th Century Fox has uh, of all the greatest uh, movies of so many of the greatest movies of the 20th century, that would be a powerful force to be reckoned with. Well, combined with the back catalog that Disney has of, of all of those great movies. I mean, before Marvel, Disney was not making just kid shows. They, they, they were making amazing uh, movies. They were, they are a major studio in and of themselves. So pack those two catalogs together in one service. That's compelling, but I don't think it drives Netflix out of business. The no. fact that Netflix is doing so well that they're willing to consider this means that's how they stay on par with Netflix in their mind, which makes me think, is this where we're headed? Because we're always like, well, what's it going to be? Are we going to continue to have PlayStation views and all these different services? Is what we're headed to, there'll be a Sony service, a Disney service, an Amazon service, a Netflix service, whatever happens to CBS, Viacom, scripts, maybe they all combine, you know, like... Is that what we end up with, like six channels where it's like movies, TV shows, all the entertainment from these big companies comes here? Well, and we've seen this story in different iterations. You know, we, you have the balkanization uh, where there's a million different apps. Everyone gets subscription fatigue, and so they all start canceling. And then uh, maybe some of them go out of diff out of business like CISO, and their, their catalog gets sold off to another company, and they come back in a new iteration. Uh, I, I think we are craving... And this is me wildly speculating, which is, I guess, why uh, you still tolerate me on the show. Uh, but if I, c I can see a place five years from now where there are pretty much just four must-have services. And, and I'm, I, you know, I can imagine them being Netflix, uh, Amazon, uh, this Disney slash Fox One, and then some wild card. Notice I'm not even putting Hulu in there. Hulu is just catch-up television. What about Universal? What about Sony? What about CBS? What I, about Viacom? I mean, I'm not saying all of them survive, but yeah, maybe they all smoosh together in one or two services themselves. That's what I'm thinking, right? Is that if they're if they're smart, they'll Voltron up and create a new, essentially pull a Hulu 2.0. Because remember, Hulu, the whole point was you had all of the broadcast companies kicking in together to create this alternative to shut down uh, YouTube, only Hulu just has never run as if they actually meant it to survive or be good. Well, uh, or Hulu, because it's part owned by Disney and Fox, 
they just buy out Comcast, say, you know, thanks, y'all. We'll just bring that into the Disney fold. Could be. Could be. Uh, but I feel like anything more than four major services is going to be uh, – I feel like there will be four huge players and then a bunch of, of smaller, you know, CISO 2.0s. Don't forget Shutter, right. one of the best services out on this. I'm just kidding. Well, we- <laughs> yeah, by the way, I got an email from Comic-Con HQ. Remember them? Uh, they are going free on Roku. Yeah. So at, you don't have to pay for them anymore. If if you remember and want to I, I remember. Our friend Anthony Carboni. Yeah, yeah. Sarah Lane. B- b- before, he, before he went to uh, uh, Disney. Yeah. The dark side. Sarah Lane went <laughs> the, to uh, the, the dark side of being awesome and reporting on Star Wars all the time. <laughs> right, yeah. Hey, uh, the the light side of the cord killers is that we're supported by you. Uh, we don't get money from any of these people we're talking about or anyone but you at patreon.com slash cord killers. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we got an email on this. Um, somebody, uh, One of the projects that we've talked about is uh, coordinating all of our spoiler in time segments so that they're easily searchable. And somebody wrote saying i'm pulling it up i should have put this up there for a while oh there we go uh casey writes hello i love the show i've been listening for a little over a year now as well as heeding your advice my wife and i are just starting to watch game of thrones and i'd love to listen to your guys past perspectives in spoiler in time from season one going forward what was the number of patrons that you needed to be able to catalog spoiler in time by show this is one of the projects that we want to do we've had we got almost a decade of content and that y- you guys can binge things out of order or out of time but you can still have it be like we're right there next to you if we hit what's the magic number here 1850 1850 so we are currently at 190 patrons short so if you've enjoyed the show if you think that we've saved you some bucks giving you some tips and helping you to get the most out of your binge watching experience just hit us up for a, bu- a buck an episode or or a buck a month uh, I would set it to a buck an episode and then you know say a maximum of a dollar a month i won't care yeah go check it out patreon.com slash cord killers now let's talk about how to watch so apple tv os 11.2 came out in beta on monday uh that means that if you're a developer you can start working on developing for it if you're in the beta channel uh you can start trying it out it won't come to users until later But when it does come to everybody, it'll let you set the Apple TV to automatically switch your display setting and your native frame rate, two different settings, uh, to to what the native resolution of the thing you're watching it is. So native frame rate and dynamic range, two, two different two different things. Apps must be adapted uh, to respect the new settings. So when it first launches, it'll obviously work with any iTunes videos you have, but other apps may or may not respect that setting. Currently, if you're like, wait a minute, isn't that how it works now? Apple TV 4K picks the highest setting a TV can do and then shows everything at that rate by upscaling if necessary. And you have to go in and manually tweak it every time you want to show uh, something that's not to that frame rate. The simpler setting will remain the default for most users. So if you want this new adaptive setting, you'll go in and have to do it because Apple's concerned the new setting will upset some users because it caused flickers when adjusting the display. Ayaz, have you played around with the Apple TV 4K much? A little bit, and I've seen what happens when it has all the settings turned on all the way up. You get some really just funky-looking video when you're not supposed to be doing that. The box costs about 180 bucks. It should be able to do this kind of thing nicely. When I've seen it, when I've seen Apple try to do all the upscaling thing, it just didn't work on certain content. So I'm glad that they're actually fixing this problem. And I, I'm sure people will go, "Why is it flickering?" But that's important if you actually like video and the actual quality of video. Seeing things at their native res. Yeah, no, it's a, you. You want to see it the way it was meant to be played. You want you want to get it the way that it was recorded. And if upscaling works, great. But it doesn't always work. In fact, one of the Apple TV screensavers of a desert looks horrible on my television because it's obviously not natively meant to be shown in that way. I'll yeah, tell you what, man. I look oh, at this. Sorry about that. All I know is that stuff is going to look better, and I get to remain even more willfully ignorant and not know why. It'll just. It, it, so a wise man once said that Apple products, they just work. Uh, and now, finally, that dream is coming true. Yeah, they used to work. 
<laughs> yes, they'll just work as long as you go in and choose this setting. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a, one of the big gripes, the Apple TV 4k, and it, it's kind of important that they, they get in there and fix that. All right, let's talk about what you can watch in under surveillance. It's all about location, location. Now, what you might be able to watch someday is another season of House of Cards, but we have no idea what it's going to look like. Friday, in a statement, Netflix said, quote, Netflix will not be involved with any further production of House of the Cards that includes Kevin Spacey. We will continue to work with MRC, that's the production company that makes it, during this hiatus time to evaluate our path forward as it relates to the show. We've also decided we will not be moving forward with the release of the film Gore, which was in post-production, starring and produced by Kevin Spacey. Now, MRC, which also stands for Media Rights Capital, uh, says that they have suspended Spacey from House of Cards effective immediately. Uh, season six production had begun and Spacey was in scenes, uh, but that production, as we mentioned last week, was suspended on October 31st. Now, The Verge mentions that the producers are trying to figure out what to do. They're considering, well, do we kill off Frank Underwood? Uh, do we just jump to a different storyline? And Variety has a separate article reporting that Netflix is in the very early stages of a spinoff centering on Doug Stamper with the executive producer of seasons one through four of House of Cards, Eric Roth, attached. And they've got a couple other spinoff ideas that are being explored. Uh House of Cards, of course, synonymous with Netflix originals. It was not the first. Lilyhammer was the first, but it was the first that was wholly Netflix since Lilyhammer was shared uh, with Scandinavian broadcasters. Uh, Brian, the, I mean, you weren't even watching House of Cards. Does this even matter to you? Well, it certainly doesn't matter in terms of the overall health of Netflix. Uh, they will figure out some way to make, continue to make that a compelling story. But you're right. I sort of ran out of steam on House of Cards uh, once... Everything just felt like it was running in circles. Uh, but uh, this is an astonishingly big move, and I, I freely admit I'm fairly tuned out. I know that 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 suddenly Kevin Spacey is radioactive, but I don't realize how radioactive uh, he is. Or 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 is there? I mean, is there broad strokes you could just bring up to speed? How bad is it? I mean, obviously, it's well, bad I enough mean, I, you, you know, he's there, there's alleged allegation, many allegations from several people of sexual assault, right? Right. Yeah, that's why they're they've gotten rid of him. I I mean, we could go deeper into that section, but I don't feel like that's really our wheelhouse. Yeah, there. sure, sure, sure. I guess I'm surprised because I've I've heard that about a lot of actors, and they continue to have jobs and gigs and stuff. Well, when you and, say heard that, what do you mean? Uh, well, I don't know. It didn't what wasn't Roman Polanski still making movies while in exile and then being distributed? Yeah, in and he's America? not allowed back in the United States. Well, so, sure, uh, sure. So I mean, there's certainly strong precedent of of pretty awful. Um, uh, right. I mean, sexual okay, paths. but <laughs> okay, not I interfering. Guess if we're gonna with go there. We're gonna money. go there. Harvey Weinstein has been kicked out of the Academy. Right. Harvey Weinstein has been kicked out of his own company. Uh, and so in light of that, any actor that is is accused at this level uh, of this kind of conduct by multiple credible sources and has a UK investigation against him is is going to be dropped. I mean, I don't think that's surprising. Uh, I, I, it certainly is. Oh, OK, well, I, I, I am surprised just because I have my entire life heard uh, stories of people who have committed sexual assaults. Well, and there's a difference assaults. between you've heard stories and multiple people coming to the press and saying, yes, as a matter of fact, I will go on record uh, and I will file a court case, et cetera, et cetera. No, et cetera. no, no, no. I, I think you're misunderstanding my point. Um, uh, uh, Hollywood is rife with tales of people who are convicted of actual physical assault and battery, of actual assault, and then they just go back to work. Um, uh, uh, I am okay. assuming so, so what that you're they are— I mean, so what you're saying is that you're surprised that Netflix dropped Kevin Spacey? Yes, I am surprised that uh, that that this for the level of money that they were making and as important as this property was uh, and uh, and uh, yes, I'm surprised. But you sound like I am answering wrong. I mean, you could be surprised. Uh, I am not at all surprised that Netflix is dropping Kevin Spacey. OK, not in the least. Uh, all right. What about you? So on that I note, I'm thinking I'm just going to I'm not going to talk about that stuff because that's all, all pretty horrible. Um, I would suggest what Netflix should do is just recast the role. Don't say anything. Like do the Darren switch and just have like, okay, this is Frank Underwood now. Really? It's Christopher Walken. Let's just go. I don't mm -hmm. care. But 
just do something. I or mean, maybe, I they, maybe, they, maybe they, uh, he dies in a car crash, but then they look at the Constitution and they're like, wait, did nobody ever notice this, this amendment that says that his brother gets to be president? And then Christopher Walken shows up. There you go. That explains well, how. I don't want to spoil anything, but they've got a better option uh, based on what happens at the end of the last season. Uh, and I, it would very easily make Robin Wright the star of season six. Uh, yeah. Best. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I think their best option is kill off Frank Underwood. That would give it a nice shake up. And yeah, I, I'm actually not really surprised that Netflix has cut ties with this I mean, guy. It's, <laughs> it's some really bad allegations out there. And he's he, he, radioactive is a really good word for, for Spacey right I now. I mean, why not? Why not write that into it? Why not? Uh, why not just uh, he never appears in it, but it's just about the media savaging of like like maybe the whole story pivots away from the White House. You only well, they already use, they already did that. Uh, uh, well, well, all right. <laughs> And then maybe it's so radioactive that uh, – Yeah, I mean, no, I'm, I'm not even joking. Like, you, you haven't watched the seasons where they, they kind of did that already. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a lot of move to room yeah, to move no, here. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> so, I, no, I, I'm, I'm curious. The, the one question I had coming out of this is what do you think of a spinoff – uh, where you take, you know, Doug Stamper, you know that that character from the early seasons, and they follow one of those. I mean, that that seems to be the cool thing to do with a successful franchise. Better Call Saul, Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, it, do you think House of Cards can support that? Uh, yes. Doug Stamper was always one of the most interesting characters in there, um, but I I don't. I mean, I guess the only way to do it is to make him have a slow descent into being a terrible person to basically model uh, Better Call Saul. But I don't know how in love with that story I'll, I'll mm. enjoy watching. I don't know that I want to see a starry-eyed, wide, optimistic version of Doug Stamper slowly get corrupted by, uh, uh, by uh, DC politics. All right. Netflix has acquired rights to Tao from Marvel Animatics director Federico D'Alessandro, a former street grifter named Julia, played by Micah Monroe, is kidnapped by a sadistic man named Alex, played by Ed Screen, and held captive by an advanced artificial intelligence named Tao. Also stars Gary Oldman, which I don't know if that means he plays Tao, but they didn't say. Uh, every sentence you said got more interesting than the one before it, and I instantly am, am in love with this idea, especially with with ending with with featuring Gary Oldman. Also stars Gary Oldman. Let's just throw that in there. Yeah. When I was hearing you say it, I thought for some reason the director was a street grifter. Like, no wait, that's <laughs> plot. Yes, uh, director Federico Alessandro, as far as we know, is not a former street grifter. <laughs> I don't know. He might be though. I didn't look into it. All right. Uh, let's find out what's coming to your favorite streaming services in November. Ayaz, do you mind if we pause and check in with Ayaz? I don't mind at all. Ayaz? All right. It's November. Here's what's new online. November 17th, gear up for The Punisher on Netflix. We get a whopping 13-episode season all at once on that Friday. Here's hoping it's more like Jessica Jones and less like Iron Fist. Speaking of Marvel shows, check out Runaways on November 21st. It's a Hulu original. The show centers around kids who find out their parents are actually villains. Runaways officially takes place in the Marvel Cinematic and TV universe. The first season of Future Man hits Hulu on November 14th. This Hulu original is about a video game player who travels through time to save the world. Oh, and it's made by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. On November 24th, check out The Big Sick on Amazon Prime. This rom-com is loosely based on Kumail Nanjiani's real-life story of meeting his wife. The Netflix original documentary, Jim and Andy, The Great Beyond, goes online on November 17th. It's a look at Jim Carrey when he played Andy Kaufman in the 1999 movie, Man on the Moon. Don't forget Amazon Prime still has NFL Thursday Night Football during the month of November. It runs on Thursdays and is about football. Get it? On Wednesday, November 22nd, you can watch the Netflix original, Barbara, the music, the memories, the magic. It's almost two hours long, and it shows Barbara Streisand working with people like Jamie Foxx and Hugh Jackman. And lastly, you can now watch Kazam on Hulu. That's right. The movie that starred Shaquille O'Neal as a wish-granting genie is available. Why would you want to watch it? Because this movie is a real movie. For more information on what's coming and going online, check out cnet.com slash netpics. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and I'll see you online. 
No, yeah, I think you're mixed up. I think it well, had Sinbad in it. It wasn't. It wasn't uh, <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal at all. That was a different uh, movie. Look at that, folks. Ayaz is right there. He was right. We see him online. I'm online. But yeah, Kazam. <laughs> It's out. All right, let's, it's available. Uh, yeah, I'll totally vouch for the big sick, too. Make sure to check that out as soon as it's available. It was great. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about what we're watching uh, now. We'll start with you, Ayaz. Uh, what what have you been watching these days? I've been on a Curb Your Enthusiasm kick. Uh, I've got HBO now, so I've watched a lot of Curb. And then I uh, finished up Stranger Things over the weekend. That's the sequel. That was really excellent. I saw Thor on Saturday. That was hilarious. I mean, just ridiculous hilarious. And I'm still watching The Flash even though season three was kind of a bummer, season four is actually a lot more fun. So if you like if you like the first season of Flash, season four is a lot more lighthearted and a lot less mopey. So this is the stuff I'm watching right right about now. I haven't I haven't watched The Flash again this this year, uh, and I think it is a little bit part of the how much mopiness there was last year. So I'm very glad to hear that. I'm not sure when I'll dive back in, but it's nice to know. Yeah, it's it's really. It's they are very conscious of how dark they made the show. And they're like, OK, we got to bring it back. They even make fun of it like they're breaking the fourth wall several times during the, the show. I mean, they don't turn a camera, but they're a lot of in jokes of, oh, yeah, we've been to like 50 funerals in the past year. That's nice. Not good. I want I want the jokey Cisco. That's my favorite Cisco. Oh, yeah. He's funny. Brian, what have you been watching? Uh, a lot of the same stuff. Uh, finished up Mindhunter and uh, I, I got caught up on Mr. Robot so we could talk about that. Finished all Stranger Things. Uh, watched Thor Ragnarok twice. And uh, I watched uh, Judah Friedlander's America is the Greatest Country in the United States uh, comedy special. It's great. It's from beginning to end. Just just hilarious and awesome. And it's uh, I love the fact that for a comedy special, it's uh, fairly understated in that um, they shot it at the Comedy Cellar just over a two-month period. He's wearing the same outfit each time, but there's title cards where sometimes it'll say, you know, different night, same question, and uh, and it just plays different. It's It seems very, very self-aware, and uh, it's great. I enjoyed it a lot. Excellent. Uh, so where, where do you watch that? On, on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Yeah. Okay, yeah. He's hilarious, too. When you say you watched Thor Ragnarok twice, I have to ask, was it because you liked it that much or you had to watch it twice or a little of both? Oh, my or... God, no, I loved it. I went and watched with my brother on Friday or Thursday night, and then uh, I was like, well, I know what I'm doing with the kids this weekend, and sure enough, went and saw it again Saturday morning. Nice. Uh, I, I did not watch much that was unusual. Uh, Star Trek Discovery is still fun for me. I'm really enjoying it. Orville, also fun, an entirely different way. Orville is the Star Trek I thought I wanted, and it's really great. Star Trek Discovery is a Star Trek that I didn't realize would also be good, and I'm enjoying that too. Uh, Also, Mr. Robot and Firefly. And uh, we joked a lot about this last week, but my wife's new show for Rotten Tomatoes, See It, Skip It, premiered on Facebook. Watch. Uh, And I, I think it's really good. You don't have to take my word for it. I know I'm married to her, uh, but you should check it out. Uh, Shagoon and Jacqueline are amazing uh, as the hosts here, and and they have opinions that I know not everyone agrees with. Right, Brian? Uh, yeah, look, uh, I still say it's a wonderful show that you should watch, even though they, uh, they're they uh, 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 we're, we're off on very skeptical footing by saying they should you should skip Thor Ragnarok. That seems like crazy talk to me, but I'll keep yeah. watching. Go check it out. Uh, you can get it at facebook.com slash see it, skip it. What are you on the lookout for there, Bryce? Hey, I, uh, so I, I, you ever have that thing where you find out about a show and you see it and you're like, oh, okay. I mean, people like this, but it's maybe not for me. And then at some point you yeah. just hear enough people say, oh, no, this was actually really good. You should watch this. Uh, that was me uh, this weekend. Uh, after I heard like my the third or fourth person tell me about Big Mouth on Netflix, we talked about this earlier this year when it was announced, uh, and it's it's a adult uh, animated cartoon on Netflix about a bunch of teenagers going through puberty and the sort of comical mischief that they get into uh, as they talk about all sorts of adult adult themes and 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 uh, you know budding sexuality. It's 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 weird because it's not really like a very appealing show on on the surface. Uh, I don't think that the character design is like great. Uh, but once you get over that and like, get comfortable with the uh, the the subject matter at hand, it's it's actually really it's really solid. And 
I, I don't know. I, I watched two episodes of it today, and it's it's it really surprised me in in being a comedy that is well that has good timing, uh, that has uh, uh, interesting subject matter, uh, where you could have just had anything about teenagers and have it been really you know tepid. Uh, it, and also parts of it remind me a lot of American Dad, which I think is uh, incredible for for uh, animated shows. Uh, so that's that's that. That's Big Mouth on Netflix. There are ten episodes there now, and there are there's a second season has been ordered. So check that out. All right, folks, if you got something we should be on the lookout for, email us cordkillers at gmail.com. Now, uh, as we remind you uh, from week to week, uh, Brian and I do other things to help pay the bills, help keep us informed uh, about what's going on around the world. We have cool different enterprises, and we like to share those with you. But I'm puzzled, Brian, how you can come up with new products for the scam stuff store. Uh, well, if I told you, then you would be enlightened. And I don't want you enlightened. I want you benighted uh, and confused as you try to solve our latest puzzle box and brand new deck of custom playing cards, uh, Outlaws. Crimson is uh, the best beautiful deck we've ever made. And there's two of them, the original Outlaws and Outlaws uh, Crimson inside the biggest, most complicated, most story-driven puzzle box we've put together, of course, along with the collectible uh, individually numbered challenge coin in there this one uh, was a lot of work and it's a it's it's the most expensive one we've done however we're uh, doing a pre-order launch thing for I guess the next week or so where it's fifty dollars off so if you're thinking about a big awesome holiday gift to give to someone who loves puzzles and loves the finer thing in life please please check it out I am unbelievably proud of how this one came out it's uh, the outlaws vault and Outlaws Crimson at scamstuff.com. All right, let's move on to the front lines. Front lines. Variety reports that Amazon is in very early talks with Warner Brothers and the Tolkien Estate on a series based on Lord of the Rings. Tolkien Estate has also approached Netflix and HBO, although apparently HBO has passed. CEO Jeff Bezos is personally involved, according to the sources. And Deadline says the rights alone would cost 200 to $250 million and might not even encompass all the characters. How excited are you, IS, about a return to the Shire again? A return oh, of not the king. At all. I could not care less about Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm so over it. So, so very over it. And and I don't doubt that that in another 10 years we'll be hungry for it. But, man, two hundred a quarter billion dollars for the rights and you don't even get the whole package. That's, uh, that's, I'm not. Uh. Well, the part about not getting all the characters worries me greatly. Uh, I will agree with you. The I don't really need it yet. Uh, I'm 100 percent on board with you. But maybe you have to start having these talks now to get it in development, to get it done right, to have it ready by the time that we are ready to revisit it. And I certainly would like somebody to do The Hobbit. You know, maybe they just start there. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nielsen says its estimates show 15.8 million people in the United States watched the first episode of Stranger Things in the first three days, putting the show alongside Game of Thrones and Walking Dead. Netflix said the data that Nielsen is reporting is not accurate, not even close, and does not reflect the viewing of these shows on Netflix. Now, this is a weird statement because I would say that's highly complimentary of yeah. its position. And... It, it seems to me that maybe this is going to be their pat answer for everything always so that they you can't read any tea leaves like like the way United States doesn't negotiate with terrorists. And that's been our policy. Always be our policy. Don't even bother. Um, what do you think? I as it's, oh, oh <laughs> that statement does sound like they're going to say this for everything. I don't know yeah. what Netflix's beef is with Nielsen because I know Nielsen. They want to have ratings information from Netflix, but Netflix, they just don't want to, they don't play that game because they don't, they're not worried about ratings. They just need subscribers, right? Yeah. And and I guess I could, I could make up an argument uh, just, just to add something, because I, I think you totally nailed it, Brian. Uh, there could be an argument where Netflix thinks if people think Stranger Things was more popular than it was, then they might demand more money for a Stranger Things like show that they want to do with Netflix in the future and it would affect the bargaining. And so Netflix wants to be able to come into those meetings saying, don't you bring those Nielsen numbers in here because we are on the record saying that those are not accurate and they don't reflect anything. Yep. 
CBS reported earnings and cited a 3% revenue climb on affiliate and subscription fee growth of 52%. Now, that was led by Showtime, uh, mostly because of the boxing matches. They also got some higher retransmission fees for their local TV stations and digital growth for CBS All Access. Putting Star Trek Discovery on there apparently had an effect. A new sports over-the-top venture called CBS Sports HQ is set to launch in the coming months. Uh, and then the uh, if you're interested, the content licensing and distribution part of CBS fell 22%. Ad revenue dropped 5%, but that was mostly because we didn't have an election in the U.S. this year, and you always get a juice from that. Uh, meanwhile, Netflix has added 4K streaming functionality to its app on the Comcast Xfinity X1 set-top box. Netflix is available on 4K on Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast Ultra, Roku, Sony TV, and more. So now it's also available on Comcast. Look at that. If you can get Comcast today, which apparently it's down for a bunch of people. Oh, really? All right. Let's move on to the dispatches from the front. Troy in Phoenix says, hey, guys, your discussion about the possibility that interface is king hit home. While my family subscribes to various streaming services, we have not gone beyond shaving the cord. We have DirecTV with DVR. We put 100% of all the TV shows we watch on the list. And the only time we care about what time and channel a show comes on is during the setup process. When it's time to watch TV, we go directly to the DVR list. And then once that's empty, then we turn to Netflix, Amazon, and Hulu. Uh... If DirecTV really wanted to lock me in, set their DVR up so that it would pull shows from streaming services into the list. Why can't Star Trek Discovery show up right next to The Walking Dead? Troy, check out TiVo Bolt. Uh, you can get a version that works with your cable. I don't know that it will work with DirecTV, uh, which is sad because DirecTV used to have the best TiVo integration, but it does exactly that. That's what it does. It puts all your over-the-air, all your cable recordings right next to Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, CBS All Access. They have a pretty good app selection. Also, Troy says, The Orville is proving to be a classic Star Trek-type series, albeit less stiff, giving us the traditional story of the week, while Discovery has gone the modern route of serialized drama. I find I like both series, and it got me thinking. Is there still room for traditional story of the week shows, or are they old-fashioned? I mean, I, I think that story of the week shows are going to continue to be the 800 pound gorilla, right? That the, that's not going anywhere. That kind of that kind of um, procedural content is is the bread and butter that sells all the washing detergent out there. I you know what? I don't know. All the shows I watch are continuing storylines. Better Call Saul, Walking Dead, Game of Thrones. I am told. Uh, that there are NCISs and CSIs, and that those are stories of the week, and uh, and that is where the washing detergent is sold. So so yeah, I guess I guess you're right. Uh, I I sometimes wonder when I'm like watching uh, something on broadcast TV, usually live, and I get the ads for these shows. I'm like, are people still watching these? But they are. They're watching them in great numbers. Yeah. Uh, in fact, that might be. It's been a good couple of years since we really checked in on on those latest numbers. We'll keep an eye out for our ne the next time we get a breakdown of how people are watching TV. Uh, Andrew in Taylor, Texas says, I wanted to point something out cool I noticed after activating movies everywhere, anywhere. Uh, a couple of years ago, I used Vo Voodoo's Disc to Digital service to convert some of my DVDs to digital copies for a few bucks a piece. I had forgotten about them until they popped into my iTunes library after I activated Movies Everywhere. Back then, you had to put the DVD in your computer's old-fashioned disk drive to confirm you had the physical copy. Now you can just scan the barcode on the DVD case with your phone using the Voodoo app. I tried this with a couple of Harry Potter DVDs we recently got from Goodwill, and it worked flawlessly. I had Prisoner of Azkaban playing on the Apple TV. TV faster than it would have taken me to find the DVD remote. Quick note, if you only pay the $2 for the standard definition copy, it seems you will only get the standard definition in iTunes. Uh, I was hoping I would, it would notice and do the HD version, but alas, I now own Goblet of Fire in 480. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I now I want to go to the Goodwill. And see I, I was available, just thinking right? the same thing, man. <laughs> Uh, although, although it does, you know, you, you, you do need to pay extra for the HD version. So it might make sense to just look for bargains at these stores. Uh, but yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, regarding spoilers and getting a better experience of the show, knowing the upcoming plot, I'm binge watching insert show here. One of the characters is hinted that she will be dead by the end of the season. I look it up. Yep. 
her character is not returning next season. Me knowing that a character that has been on the show since day one will not return makes it more enjoyable for me to enjoy the show as I can process the upcoming death scene, says Cinna. Uh, that's so interesting. I, I, it's, it takes all kinds to make a kooky quilt. Uh, Sean writes in saying, having worked as a software engineer for a very large financial entity, I had a pretty un solid understanding of how statistical experiments work. The thing is, every experiment basically boils down to a, 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 establishing causality between two variables. If I change X, does it affect Y? And if so, by how much? Most bad studies fail because they either, one, fail to properly define their variables, two, fail to properly establish causality. I'm oversimplifying. I'm simplifying majorly here, but it's but that's the gist. The problem needs Nielsen faces is how to proper, properly define the variables. However, I don't think this is an impossible task. Taking the Netflix example, you can pretty easily run an experiment to establish if movies of this genre appear on their home screen, then they're more likely to like this procedural drama, etc. So I think Nielsen still has a pretty good future. I, I It sounds to me like you're making a case for the opposite. Nielsen is on the outside listening to through the door at what mommy and daddy are listening to and trying to make up guesses about what that means. Meanwhile, Netflix is the actual television tracking every single thing they do. I mean, yes, Nielsen obviously has a lot of access to a lot of other numbers, but but nothing compared to the fidelity of the rich data that Netflix has. Well, true. That's absolutely true. But, you know, if I can add a couple of points here, first of all, I think he's responding to someone saying, well, Nielsen's numbers won't be accurate at all because Netflix will suggest things to people and they'll watch those. And I still have a problem with that because at the basis, Nielsen's just trying to estimate how many people watched anything. And it doesn't matter what shows up on their screen at that point. If they want to slice and dice and get into more nuanced stuff like he's talking about here, then yes, uh, they require a more stringent study. But you just need a representative sample to make a guess at how many people are watching a thing. And if you structure it right, you should get a pretty accurate representation of the wider audience. And to me, that's what Nielsen is providing. They're like, yeah, sure, Netflix has all those numbers. They're not sharing them with anybody. So if you're willing to pay to get that number that Netflix won't give you because you want to make a competing show or you want to pitch a show to Netflix or for whatever reason, we can come up with a fairly accurate number. Yep, I agree. I think that's what to pitch in there. Uh, and then finally, our boss, Chris from Parkville, Maryland, wrote in and said, I loved the discussion about Movies Anywhere in episode 191. I was so excited. I signed up at my first available opportunity. Connecting all the services went very smooth on my cell phone, except for iTunes because I'm on Android. But even that I got connected once I got to a desktop. Libraries on the various services either updated immediately or with a refresh. And according to this article in The Verge, 4K upgrades, the free 4K upgrades, are limited to Apple titles. Yeah, that's that's an Apple thing. Example, I own Glory in HD on Vudu through a disc upgrade. It's available on all the other services, but there is a 4K version on Amazon. I do not have access to that one, even after registering with Movies Anywhere. I hope other studios get on board with the 4K upgrades. It also irks me that the 4K versions of some movies are only available on one service. Two I know about, Star Trek Beyond, is only 4K on Vudu. Glory is only 4K on Amazon. This obstacle will slow the adoption of 4K as convenience trumps fidelity, says Chris. I, I believe that. That sounds like a smart thought. Yeah. Part of the reason that the 4K is slow, is not available on all the services, is is it, it's a lot of effort to encode those things. And, and different services are willing to go at it at different amounts. They know they're not going to sell a lot of these things because a lot of people don't have 4K. This was true of HD on, on Blu-rays and HD DVDs. Uh, Ayaz, do you have any thoughts about that? You know, I, I liked that Apple was saying that, that you would have the 4K upgrades. I think that was a really risky move, really, because I, I think they should be generating revenue and that's other companies should be doing the same. So it's, it's nice that Apple's doing that at all, but it would be great if everybody did it, but I just don't see like a company like Walmart saying, yeah, you know what voodoo, we're just going to go ahead and upgrade everybody. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and what Apple's doing is a little less than it appears. Uh, they're saying if you have an Apple TV and you're streaming the 4k or the movie, the HD movie, and you've got a 4k version of our product that you spent money on in a 4k TV, then we'll just stream it in 4K. But you actually don't get to download the 4K version. Yeah, that's so, kind of a downer. Yeah. Uh, well, I as Actar, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. If folks want to find more of you, where should they go? 
Always go to twitter.com slash Ayaz, or uh, I'm doing some independent podcasts these days, so you can go to patreon.com slash Ayaz, and you can see what I'm working on there. Um, I'm going to be recording a show right after I get off of this show, so I'll see you guys then. Oh, excellent. Go check it out. Our website is CoreyKillers.com. Our email address is CoreyKillers at gmail.com. We're live on DiamondClub.tv, Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Talk to you then. Hey, guys. Tom and Brian here. We just wanted to say thank you to all of our $5 patrons who keep us loud, live, and independent. You guys make Cord Killers the production that it is. Your name appears in the video credits and appears in our hearts. And if you'd like to become one of them or see who they are, you can go to patreon.com slash cord killers. You'll need to do more than just go there, though. You'll have to sign up and, you know, pledge an amount. But Unless you just want to see who they are. Well, I mean, you can gawk. That's a little creepy, isn't it? If you want to be a gawker, let's go. Up to you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>